Welcome to As Above, So Below with Sydney Rich and Keisha Lee, the Psychic Yogi. Awesome. So welcome, you guys. It's the Virgo New Moon. Uh, technically, it'll be tomorrow on September 14th, but we are bringing it in, ushering it in, in this window um, tonight. And let's get into this energy. I hope you guys have been having a wonderful Virgo season um, as a Virgo sun. I know I have, uh, but let's get into the intricacies of this energy. So we get to really focus on Virgo energy with the new moon as the new moon is in the sun sign, right? Because they're conjunct in the sign, in the sky, meaning they're at the same point. So the sun and the moon are together in love and harmony when we have a new moon. And that is why we cannot see new moons in the sky because the sun is kind of blocking the moon. Um, and so that same darkness is also called a dark moon is kind of a reflective point for us, an introspection time period for um, us down here on earth, right? The below folks. And with that, it's really a time, as we know, as ma of manifestations, because we have to know ourselves to know what we want and know what we're um, maybe needing to tweak or adjust or what we've learned since the full moon that we've released. And now we've created space for this new energy to come in. And that's what's also really cool about moon cycles is I, we always like to talk about that they do connect to one another. So we don't want to forget what we talked about in the full moon and what you wrote down in the full moon for your own personal journaling and reflective practices. You want to take an assessment and see like what space has been created since then or how you're able to use that energy um, of that full moon to really solidify and put forth your manifestations for this new moon in Virgo. So Virgo rules the sixth house in astrology. The sixth house is the house of routine, health. Um, it's the house of service. So as we set these intentions for ourselves moving forward with this new moon, we want to hit on some of those things, or they might be big themes in your life currently, how you're treating your body, how you're um, shifting or adjusting your routine to make it more efficient, to make it work better for what your goals are in the long term. Uh, Virgo is also a mutable energy. So this is really a good season as we're going from summer into fall to shift some things around, to make some changes and to bring in some different practices that can be more advantageous for your overall health, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. So you might even find yourself being more strict with your diet or with your workout routine or with your spiritual practice. You might be really clear on wanting to meditate in the mornings or in the evenings or you're praying um, very religiously during the season because it's something that keeps you structured. It keeps you um, in alignment. And that's why I really enjoy Virgo energy because it is a very spiritual energy that is tangible, that we can feel, that we can touch, that we can interact with. So it's, it feels more real. It feels like we can make spirituality more real and tangible. So understanding that that's kind of what this new moon is bringing up for us internally. Um, I wrote down, I don't know how many of you got, well, probably all of our uh, followers, we might have younger ones, but the Barney song came to my brain when I was reflecting on the energy today. Uh, clean up, clean up, everybody, everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody, do your share, okay? So we're in this space where we're cleaning things up that are not useful anymore for us. We don't need it anymore. Or we're organizing things so we have more clarity. So we feel like, okay, I can breathe. As a Virgo son, I have, I clean all the time anyways, but I definitely have been cleaning more intentionally this season. Just 
moving things. Like when you vacuum, sometimes you just vacuum around furniture, but Virgo season asks you to like move stuff out of the way so you can get behind the stuff that you didn't usually shift around. And that's kind of what we're also doing with our personal lives. You know, really looking behind things and going deeper to get the nooks and crannies of our life and to make sure we're like removing those cobwebs and removing the dirt that can get in the way of having a really clean foundation for us to continue to build on throughout the remainder of this calendar year and the remainder of the astrological year as we are going into Libra um, next. So Libra is all about balance. And I think it's pretty interesting that Virgo is the sixth sign in astrology. So technically it is the middle. It is the um, center point of astro the astrological calendar. And I think it works in that manner because it's time for us to clean house. It's time for us to realize where we're going really well and where we have a really good routine or where we might need to tighten up a bit so that we can really um, start to be more harmonious in all aspects, which Libra season will bring in for us, right? So I think it's really interesting that it's the it's the halfway part, halfway mark, but Libra is technically the balancer of the astrological energies. Um, so it really is like, okay, like, this is the time to get organized. It's the time to get things together. Um, Virgo season starting when school starts, I think, is a good way to kind of, like, look at the energy of this because I love my notebooks and my pens and my um, Sharpies and all the things that tools that you could use to kind of make your life make sense. Um, so kind of realizing that we may not be going to school as we get older, but we can still go to school in our personal, our spiritual, physical lives and get our stuff together, you know, get a whiteboard out and, and put all of our stuff up on the whiteboard so that we're making sure that we're on schedule or making sure our calendars are up to date or writing things down just so that we feel more on top of all of our tasks and the things. Um, so that I have written down, have you organized all the energy of the season and this year? So this, what I've been speaking about, yeah, taking tabs on what you've learned this year, what you've um, learned about yourself, your connections in terms of love, relationships, money, all of those things, and kind of like getting really together on what works, what doesn't work, what has been working, what you thought was gonna work, but maybe we need to scrap that because it's not really yielding the results that we want and being okay with that change. I love that Virgo energy is mutable energy because we need these pockets of mute, mutable energy throughout the year so that we can adjust and be flexible and not feel stuck and rigid in our growth and expansion on our soul's journey, right? Like that's what we're doing. We're co-creating with the universe always. And this might be a time frame with this new moon to say, hey, I thought I wanted this, but things have changed. Or I still want this. It's not happening, but let me refocus my energy on what maybe I could be doing to make that come into fruition. Um, the last thing I want to chat about is the some of the planetary aspects that are happening right now that can help us that are like giving us a little bit of a booster shot, so to speak, right? Virgo rules the sixth house. Sixth house is all about health. That's where you get your vaccinations. So astrologically, we're kind of getting a booster shot with this trine that is currently happening or will be happening with the new moon. So a trine in astrology is an auspicious or a good um, aspect that is happening. It is something that brings good things into your life. It's an easy aspect. It's a 
uh, one that you you seek out because everything seems to be balanced and flowing. It's a triangle, right? So we use a triangle a lot in spirituality. It has a lot of significance and the trine is no different. So there is a trine going on right now with the new moon. So the moon's in Virgo. And then the Pluto, as we already have known, is in Capricorn. So the new moon is making a aspect with Pluto, and it's also making an aspect with Uranus that's in uh, Taurus. So you have Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. You have an Earth sign trine that's going on with this new moon. And as we know, Earth signs bring things into the material. It's tangible. We can feel it. We can touch it. We can experience it. And a trine is a positive aspect. So good things that we can feel, touch, experience can happen with this new moon energy as we manifest. Manifest Manifesting is the idea of bringing something to us. We want to touch it. We want to live it. We want to have it. And so this is a really awesome new moon to manifest. New moons in general are about manifesting, but with an earth sign, you really can bring it into your reality, especially with this Virgo energy and this trine that's happening. As Pluto is about change, transformation, and Uranus is that unexpected energy, that ingenuity, that thing that we didn't think could happen, but wow, it is happening. Um, the last thing I'll speak about is the fact that we are in this Mercury retrograde. It's almost over. Blessings, okay? Because it has been hitting me pretty hard um, in a very physical way, like a very earthly way, which I think is really funny. It is in Virgo. It goes direct on Saturday, the 16th. But with this retrograde season and this trine that's happening, it's about being able to kind of go backwards to some of the things that we may have wanted to manifest or bring into reality that haven't happened yet. But it's like, it wasn't time. It's a revisiting of some things, maybe even from Pisces season, right? earlier in this year that we said we wanted this to happen in 2023 and maybe it hasn't come to fruition yet but this new moon is really creating an energetic space to go back revisit and really start to bring those things that maybe we thought were a lost cause back in to play with this retrograde so retrogrades are great for going backwards and picking things up and bringing them back um, to the focus. And that is a positive aspect of retrogrades along with all the other planets that are currently still in retrograde. So I'm really digging the energy, like it a lot. And I'll pull a card or two for um, the collective. Um, I know this is dead space. Sorry, you guys. I was shuffling. I'm using the Light Seers deck for a new moon collective message. The Three of Pentacles, Earth energy coming out. Threes are about manifesting so that's really in alignment with this new moon i just looked at my phone it's 8 31 that is my birthday so this is about collaborating with yourself and others to bring things into creation understanding your role understanding other people's role understanding that you may that this is not something you have to do alone that maybe to bring something that you wanted into reality, other people had to catch up, right? Going back to that retrograde energy, maybe the other people that you needed to make something happen weren't ready yet because this is a very collaborative energy. And so it's a reminder that you do not have to do anything on your own. And the bottom of the deck is really cool too. It's a seven of cups reverse. And a seven of cups reverse is so Pisces, I can't even deal with it. Um, so that's cool that this came up because it's saying your dreams, your hopes, your aspirations, you can make them real. 
an upright seven of cups talks about daydreaming. It talks about wishing, hoping, confusion, wondering. I could do this. I could do that. I could do this. A reverse seven of cups says you made a decision and now you're ready to make your dreams real. So I think that's a perfect pull for this new moon in Virgo as we kick it over for our energy reading with Miss Keisha Lee. Right. Well, I thought that was interesting, this whole trying situation, because one, obviously, Arcana's logo is that, <laughs> the A, you know, so we are already in the game with that one. Um, but also, even though, like, it can represent masculine energy in an aspect, the triangle, the um, the feminine aspect would be the opposite way where you have the two points here and the point at the bottom uh, representing like a womb kind of space. But when you have the point at the top and the two points at the bottom to make the triangle, it is about bringing that as above, so below. Um, one exercise that you can actually do is use this as like a holy trinity around yourself. So as a collective homework assignment, which you can do during this, uh, this Virgo season window is on a sheet of paper. You can actually just write your name in the middle. Okay. However you identify yourself, write that in the middle and then draw a triangle around it and just pick three things that, um, three energies, three qualities, three things that you would like to bring into manifestation. Okay. And for each point, you'll put one of those things. Um, so for example, on my phone, my screensaver, I had pleasure, purpose, and prosperity. So for me, as an example, I would put Keisha in the middle of the triangle and I would put pleasure here, purpose here, prosperity here. Now, what do I actually want that to look like? So then you can break it down a little bit more and start to build around that. What are some of the things that would like, for instance, if with pleasure, what are, or purpose, I think is the first one I picked. So purpose up here. What are some things that I would like to manifest when it comes down to purpose? Maybe clarity, synchronicities, um, something that you're, you know, I don't know, uh, creative, allows you to express your autonomy, your truth. And then maybe with, you know, or being of service, since it is Virgo season, being of service. And then with pleasure, what are the things that bring you pleasure? What would you like more of in your life? And being able to write those things down for preferably in bullet points, right? Virgo energy organized <laughs> with your cute pen and your cute pad of paper. Um, and so then writing those things down, what are the things that bring you pleasure? And try to keep those sub lists like three to five items, okay? Uh, when you're working with manifestation, it's typically better and more potency when you can alchemize less things, okay? You don't turn lead into gold by doing lead and nickel and this and silver and all that so it's just lead into gold okay just keep it simple right um that basics keep it very fundamental grounded very virgo um but we have purpose and then i said pleasure and then prosperity so what are the things that you would like what does prosperity look like for you you know if you were to put that in bullet points here underneath um that part and start to build this triangle out and really keep that somewhere where your eyes can subconsciously and consciously focus in on that. It's pretty much like a vision board, but just with a little different uh, spiritual swag to it, okay? Um, <laughs> something else that I find that this, in, this energy can help us to reflect on is not only our past, but the wisdom that is attained from that, okay? So Sydney mentioned looking at the past, revisiting those things and extracting what serves us, discarding what doesn't, so that we can plant seeds in that new fertile soil. This is a very fertile time actually um, for manifesting and planting seeds because of this trine, um, not only the trine being like a holy trinity and the number three, pentacles, earth energy, and we have this trine happening in three earth signs. Like it couldn't be any more perfect <laughs> or designed by the what, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's another Trinity, okay? You got the triple goddess energy um, as well. So it's kind of like this, if you're gonna plant seeds for bringing things into fruition, right? Fruitfulness, tapping into that energy. This was actually what goddess meditation was, um, goddess guidance, sorry, was about the other night is tapping into that energy of fertility of celebration, 
of fruitfulness, you know, and being able to know that you have abundance that you can tap into at any point. And in order for us to find balance here in this physical realm, we sometimes forget that there's dimensions below us. Um, a lot of people are focused on dimensions that are higher than us, ascending into the fifth dimension. Um, but there's dimensions way beyond that. And there's also dimensions below us that we forget to tap into. And sometimes on our spiritual journey, we go into hermit mode, right? And sometimes we feel like the high priestess. Sometimes we feel um, isolated and excluded, um, you know, very introverted, more retrospective. And then there's times when we feel like, okay, our crown is lit, our crown is on, we know who we are, we're intuitive, we're walking our path and purpose and with clarity. And so sometimes in the middle between those stages, it can be a little tricky to navigate. But when you understand that there's various dimensions above and also below, which a lot of people don't always talk about, um, it'll help you to find balance, says a Libra. It'll help you to find balance between those different dimensions, okay? You can go up and you can go down. And when you allow yourself to flow, being mutable, right, and adaptive and open to change, when you allow yourself to flow within that space, the two different spaces, now you have a new creation, a new possibility. You have space for uh, miracles, for synchronous serendipity, all these positive things that might be unexpected but at the same time if you've been doing the work and you've been preparing yourself and then the opportunity arises well that's where luck happens right that intersection of luck so i find it very interesting to i'm looking at my notes if i look down y'all <laughs> but um, with this trinity and it being manifest like a great opportunity to manifest um i find that the three of pentacles was very synchronistic and timely um, but this is also a time for reflecting on where you can be consistent. Um, sometimes discipline and consistency, structure, all that sounds like a little uh, to me. It sounds heavy, like, oh, man. <laughs> However, I realized that structure, discipline, organization, those are like masculine traits. So that would be like the hermit aspect of Virgo. The high priestess aspect is more of that adaptable, you know, moving slow and steady with grace, okay? Moving with um, intention, right? What you plant this seed, you know what's coming up, right? If you plant a uh, rose seed, you're going to get roses. You're not going to get potatoes. Um, and then also for me, that switching from that masculine and feminine energy to me, discipline comes through in a feminine practice as devotion, being devoted to something, being ritualistic, okay, tapping into that. And so that for me works a little better when I look at um, things in like a spiritual aspect, but it helps me to have that earthly aspect as well come together and combine. And the next thing you know, because I have the masculine and the feminine, then I'm the third point in that trine, okay? So I love that way of trying to see things, seeing both sides. Libra, once again, here we go. But <laughs> seeing both sides of the equation. Um, and one word that really came to me for Virgo energy is altruism. I think that's a good word because it's of service, but it's of grace. It's of purity. It's of... Um, intentionality you know i think of altruism it's like it's bigger than me you know what i'm saying it's it, it brings purpose and like pleasure and clarity it just brings all that together so if you need a word to define virgo energy i like to look at it as altruism i know they get caught up in you know being perfectionist and stuff i actually like to shift that because we have the ability to change our minds right <laughs> so i like to switch my focus of virgo and energy being more about refinement right so when it comes down to the health instead of putting so much pressure on yourself to be perfect whatever that is how about you would just refine where you are you know refining things means like making adjustments as needed it doesn't have to be uh so dramatic or swinging from one scale to the other doesn't have to be so drastic because a lot of times that is what keeps us kind of stuck when you have that fear of change um or fear of success you know sometimes those things we have them associated with big steps like leaps of faith taking risks 
Well, earth signs, they move slow. Okay, they move slower. Earth moves slow. She moves in her own pace, her own cadence, but yet everything is accomplished. The seasons still flow. They might be shorter. They might be longer. Days might be shorter. Days might be longer, whatever, depending on where we are and what season and what hemisphere. But at the same time, everything still gets accomplished. What needs to bloom blooms and what needs to die dies. And in the space in between is the point of possibility, manifestation, miracles, creation, all that good stuff. Um, and so three things that I realize when it comes to um, like a little homework assignment, the teacher and me, <laughs> y'all's homework is one, that Holy Trinity thing. You can, if you're a Reiki practitioner, you can also do Reiki that way. So you just draw three symbols um, or you can put yourself a healing or intention in the triangle and then write things that you need to support it around it. Um, and with being a Reiki practitioner, you can also send Reiki to that. So you have something physical you can place your hands on. Physicality is all about earth being connected to our earthly realm as a spiritual being. So that will be something that you can do. You can also just place your hands on that triangle if you want to and just say a prayer. Picture yourself sending love and light into it, drawing down cosmic energy into your body from the heavens and drawing up earth energy from your feet, allowing both of those energies to connect in the heart space, sending it out through your hands and into this paper with your holy trinity that you are creating. Uh, so that's example or exercise, sorry, number one. The second one is your wealth garden. It is something that I talk about in other meditations that we have on our Patreon, but <clears throat> basically your garden of wealth, you can plant seeds for whatever you would like. You can, you know, map it out. So just because you have a garden, you want to make sure, first of all, you have fertile soil. We always talk, already talked about how this is an opportune time for that, but when you're planting a garden, you can plant whatever you want. You can have just all one kind of flowers. You can have different types of flowers. You can have flowers and vegetables. You know, what is it that you want in your garden? So if you were to map out your, your wealth garden is what I like to call it. You can also use this on a vision board or in your journal and just pretend like you're mapping out a garden. Maybe you, you know, have like six different spaces, eight different spaces, however you want your garden to grow. OK, and then you can write in each section what it is that you would like to manifest. And just maybe if you're using a bigger vision board, then you can cut out pictures and so forth and, you know, tape or paste those around each individual uh, word or intention in those different sections. I like to use different colored paper uh, for each section when I'm doing a vision board that way. And then the third because options give you, you know, opportunity to shift and be mutable. Um, and I like that all my examples are very organized. <laughs> be creative, but organized with it. Um, and so the third one is compartmentalizing yourself. So now that you've identified, you know, two different ways you like to manifest, right? The Holy Trinity or your wealth garden, whatever it is that you are manifesting, however you do it, compartmentalize yourself. Meaning, give yourself an opportunity to receive subconscious feedback. What I mean by that is it'll help you to become more um, tuned in to your intuition, but also help you to become more masterful of your energy and of self, but give you somewhat, well, it'll give you somewhat objective feedback so you know how to work with it and helps you to uh, not have so much emotion and ego attached to things. So it helps you to practice a little detachment when it comes to manifestation. But to compartmentalize yourself, I like to look at myself in various aspects. So spiritually, on a scale of zero to 100, where do I feel like I am? And I say feel, not think, because we'll, you'll think your way into stuff sometimes. How, how spiritually, how open do I feel on a scale zero to 100 to have whatever manifestation? It might be 100, it might be zero. It's just feedback. How open are you to receiving that? Mentally, you'll do the same thing. Mentally, how open am I, you know, zero to 100% in receiving this manifestation? You might find, what, just go with whatever first number pops into your head. And then you go with emotionally on a scale of zero to 100. How emotionally available are you for this? Uh, physically, scale of zero to 100. How 
open are you physically for this? Okay, whether it's your home, your car, or you know, your body, whatever. Um, sexually, how open or available are you for something? Financially, how open or available are you for something? Socially, how open or available are you for something? Environmentally, you know, so you can break down the different aspects of yourself. Um, I personally like to use this in gauging where I am in relationships. So when people say they're emotionally unavailable, that makes sense. That means emotionally they are probably on a scale of zero to 100 at zero or somewhere less than 50%. But guess what? Sexually, they may be at 100%. Like, hey, I'm available, you know, DTF. All right. You know, but emotionally, it's like, mm -mm, I don't want no attachment. But then spiritually, you might be like, oh, yes, this is probably like some kind of karmic situation. Mentally, you're like, I don't know what the hell's going on. 50%. We are 50%. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and then physically, you might be like physically and sexually are two different things to me because you might be sexually available for a relationship, but physically you might be like, yeah, but I don't want you just at my place all the time, or I don't want to be parlaying all up in your place all the time. You might want space. It's okay to just hook up. And then after that, you're like, okay, I need space. I'm gonna go home now. Um, so that kind of thing. And then socially, environmentally, all that. It's good to gauge where you are on a scale of zero to 100 because anything less than 100% means there's work to do. There's some con there's subconscious work or subconscious energy that is keeping you blocked or there's other people's energy in your space somewhere on those levels that might be keeping you stuck or resistance, fear of change. And that's where you can develop your intuition by tapping in and asking yourself, what's blocking that? And see what comes, a lot of times just go with the first thing that comes on your mind because your imagination is already being activated by doing work like this. And so your mind is typically more open. And as you allow your mind to be more open, not only does that allow your mind's eye to also be more open to see things in truth and clarity, but also when you're open-minded, your crown is more open as well. You have access to higher wisdom, hence the high priestess, okay? So... With that being said, um, yeah, you know, I don't know. That's, that's, I think that's what I got for you. <laughs> uh, the seven of cups in reverse is coming up to me a little bit. The three of pentacles we mentioned with the Trinity, but the seven of cups in reverse to me, it's like when Cindy, you were talking about the seventh house being ruled by Libra and you would think that would be the center point, the balance. But it's almost kind of like the seven cups is like in reverse is pouring back into the six. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's kind of like, okay, like pouring, pouring back into that, if that makes any sense. Pouring back into that, see where you are overflowing, you know, or what needs, what other cups, if you're going from seven to six, you might have to empty out some of the stuff that's in those other cups, clean them out, and then, um, you know, refill them with something that you truly desire. So uh, checking in with your emotions, checking in with your mental, and um, if you enjoyed this chat, feel free to connect with us on our other platforms. We have Patreon, which we host our meditations on, our goddess guidance, new and full moon meditations, as well as our astro reiki meditations, um, and then we also have our podcast, so Arcana ATL is on there, and you can just like, subscribe, or share this video here on YouTube. We appreciate your help and your support. So, blessings. Do your homework. <laughs> See you guys next time.